Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to show you Wasp Zap. Wasp Zap is the counterpart to Burp Suite and it can do a whole lot of things for free which Burp Suite charges you for. I'm going to show you a few things that Zap can do but I want you to keep in mind that Zap is really expensive. Expensive as in big, not in costing a lot of money. And I can't show you everything in a single video. But I'm going to try and show you the most important parts. Hopefully you can get to use a zap this way and you can get a feeling for it yourself. First of all, when you start up a zap, you get this persistence window. Do you want to persist the zap session? What you need to know is that everything is stored in a HSQL database. So that means that it's open source and you can actually go look at the file. You can actually go look at the database, but that's not too important. You can have persistence. This is what Burp Suite would call saving your project. You can have persistence based on the current timestamp or you want to have persistence and you want to specify your own name and location. I'm not gonna remember anything for now because I'm going to record and I'm going to start. Now, when I start, you can see that I have a few add-ons. It's going to tell me you have some updates. Okay, that's good. I don't want to update right now at this moment. And the moment you enter, you're going to enter in standard mode. Um, now you have a couple of modes here. You have attack mode, you have standard mode, protected and safe mode. Now what those modes do is you'll see some options becoming available. Every time I enable one, some things become available again. And you will see later on what that means. Now we have different sites in here and different contexts. I want to give you an idea of the context because this is the in scope section like included this is all of the regular expressions that you want to include you want to uh, add a proper regular expression here by the way you can exclude some you can exclude certain you can exclude certain structures certain ways of um, composing url you can insert or export export uh, some technologies authentication so you can actually do quite a lot of things in here as you can see now most of the people are going to use include and exclude in context that's going to be your in scope and out of scope now you can also have a section general and you can say i want to exclude specific things from my proxy from my scanner or from my spider and from the web sockets as well that's it for context, so that's going to tell you your scope. Now you can see that you have a plus in here, there's a plus almost everywhere. And that's because OWASP Zap is only going to show you the windows which it thinks that matter for you at the moment. If you need another window, you can always press this plus and you might get that plus as well. So that's some, uh, you might get that window. So when we need it, we'll see that window. Today we're going to do some automatic scans and some man manual exploration. First of all, let's do some manual exploring. Now, what I really like about OWASP Zap is that I can just go to a website here like hexpert.com, which is my own website, and I can enable the HUD and I can launch the browser. So let's do that. And it's going to launch a new instance of Firefox. And you'll see what I mean by the HUD. It's really cool. So um, we have a website right here. Let's say we want to go to google.com instead. Okay, there we are, google.com. We can click around a little bit. Uh, and while we're doing that, it's filling up these sites here. And it's taking everything into account because I haven't set my um i haven't set my scope properly so everything is being taken into account here and here in the alerts section i can see that a few of these sites have some medium alerts some low and some informational alerts i can also see which ones by the flags in here so that's really interesting for me i love seeing that i can see the requests that are being made the response that's being made i can see a whole lot of things uh, and a whole lot of options are also hidden behind the right click menu. So if you were looking for something, you might have the option in the right click menu. Now, let's say I'm exploring a little bit. So let's go back to my website, expert.com. At a certain point, you will see this. Welcome to the Zap Hut. So you have a continue to target button and you take a tutorial button. I'm just going to continue to target button. I'm going to go back to my website, expert.com. 
there we go and now the hut is gone so unfortunately i don't know why that hut sometimes enables sometimes doesn't apparently on google i can really see it and sometimes I, on some websites i can't i haven't figured out why yet so if anybody knows please let me know but as you can see here this page has zero high alerts zero medium alerts six low and three uh, informational alerts and the site in total you can see that as well here now you can start a spider from certain parts of the website or you can start an ajax spider you can also start active scans but you have to put it in scope of course so you want to add google in scope you're going to press start um, and you can also turn on attack mode so this will what this is going to do is zap is going to make some active scans on its own so as you can see here i have a new scan being opened up uh, and i'm going to type something in while i do that of course the zap is scanning in the background but i can also start a new scan and it's going to ask me for a policy here and this is the automated scans and this policy is basically going to determine what it's going to scan so you have the default policy here or one that i made xss policies and you can define those policies in here scan management policies and as you can see i have almost everything off except for injections and in injections i have only the cross-site scriptings on you can do a lot more with it of course you can set it up as you wish but that's how i set up my cross-site scripting scan and i did that specifically because i have cross-site scripting uh, pages on my website so i'm going to start a scan um, the starting point i need to select as well in this case it's going to be expert and then i'm going to start my scan and as you can see here in the bottom it's scanning right now now you can see the requests that are being made you can see some of the alerts that are being made here and from the active scan we should be able to see what it's testing for as well as you can see here it's testing for these items but it hasn't found anything proper yet that's because it doesn't have any spidering it didn't spider yet so what i can do is i can go back to here i can do automatic scans i can go back to hexpert Dot com there we go i can use a traditional spider and what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all of these websites it's going to try and visit all of the urls and then it's going to attempt the scan as well so currently it's spidering it's trying to find all of the different pages and of course it's going to do some um it's going to do some um some background scanning as well as you can see we're spidering right now and as it will spider it's going to spider up a whole load, load of new pages and that means that when i go back to hexpert.com i can actually attack with an active scan again or i can do one of these other things which is really cool because you can do fuzzing for example you can this is like the burp suite intruder we'll learn more about that in a future video uh, we can do forced browse site forced browse directory we can do a whole lot of things port scanning can even be done if you add an extension because this port scanning is from an extension uh, and then we can also include this in the context if we want to um, and we can also do a whole lot of things in here as well we can actually copy all of the urls if we want to uh, right now what we're going to do is we're going to start an active scan but i want to do it only on my cross-site scripting uh, so as you can see here this is my cross-site scripting page and i want to do an active cross-site scripting scan on here so you can see my starting point you can see i can filter out specific things if i want to as well now in this one i'm going to just start my scan and it's going to try and find reflected cross-site scripting and stored cross-site scripting on all of these pages and again i can look in here i can see what it's trying to find and if it found something i can see an alert here as well now it really bothers me that the cross-site scripting spider doesn't really find my cross-site scripting on my website so you have to be careful with scanners that's what i always say you really have to be careful with scanners and of course if a scan is going to miss something you can't automatically assume it's not there it's just something you have to be really careful with 
um, you can see some alerts in here of course you can look deeper into them you can see okay this has the alert uh, this website it has a csp wildcard directive that's not good okay then you can fix that but this is a medium one now if there's cross site scripting one in here of course you always need to verify it and that's not always as easy as it seems sometimes it's just click url but sometimes it's more than that now one thing i also wanted to show you is the um let's see here this manual browsing is done the requests i've been able to show you you can see that you can set this into hex if you want to if you want to you can show this in text you might want to show this in hex that's possible you can do the same for the body you can throw it in hex there is no body at the moment and now you can see that an ajax spider has been started that's from the uh, scans that we are doing so it's it's scanning a lot of things with ajax spiders it's not just a simple man in the middle proxy you can do a whole lot of things with this and if you go back to the manual scanning, manual exploring, you can see that you also can do for, uh, Chrome in here. Same thing for the automated scanning. We are using Firefox headless right now. We can also just use Firefox or Chrome because sometimes in the headless, you will have some different results. Um, it's, you can do a lot more things with Burp Suite for free than you can do with the, um, sorry, with Burp Suite you can do a lot more with OWASP Zap for free, of course, than you can do with Burp Suite Paid. Now, I'm going to go over some add-ons and in a follow-up video. Um, there are some more things that you can do in here. Um, you can see some layout options. This might be interesting. Um, there's also, of course, you can save your project. This means that all of these will be saved and will be stopped, of course, because there's still process running. Snapshot, snapshotting our session as we can set our session properties. This is the properties of everything that's running in here. So you have a lot of things that you can set up um, sometimes. And this is important to know if you're scanning and you're scanning actively, you might have a target which does not allow automated scans so always always verify this with the target that you're hacking and um, sometimes they might only automate allow automated scans at one request per second so be sure to set up properly for that and make sure that you have um, that you have permission to do all of these scans of course this is my own website hexpert.com and of course i can do a complete active scan on hexpert.com this is my own website and there are some advanced uh, options in here as well by the way um i usually don't use those i usually just start my scan i'm going to look at the alerts that come from that active scan because it can be quite hard sometimes to see what's happening in the scan that's why you might want to open this one um, this window shows that it has two alerts by now. So let's see what those two alerts are. Cross-site scripting reflected on XSS, post, CSP, index, and safe eval. And that's correct. I know that there is a cross-site scripting in there. Now, this is a post cross-site scripting and says it right here as well. You also have re reflected cross-site scriptings apparently. And this is from these pages right here. So 10, 20, 21, and 40, it's been able to solve. Of course, I have more labs in there, but these are already pretty good because as you can see, it also has some, um, some as you can see here, some JavaScript injection. And the cool thing is once I click this, you can see the complete requ request and response. Uh, you can see it right here. Now, the only thing that I want to do is I want to be able to send this to the repeater. I haven't been able to find anything like the repeater yet, but that's something that I might. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so as you can see, here we go. We have our repeater. So we basically have everything that we need from Burp Suite Pro into OWASP Zap for free. Amazing little tool. Amazing that it's free and amazing how much options you have in here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.